Hey, it's Mazzy here, and I had a dream that I woke up and everything was wrong. There's that uh, great comedy album by the Firesign Theater, Everything You Know Is Wrong. Now that's maybe pushing a little too uh, far, but uh, I was inspired because of this whole possible debacle that since 2015, some mobile fidelity records are not all analog. There's a digital step. Now, I'm doing my 10 favorite sounding mobile fidelity LPs. I listened to them all day today when I recorded this on Friday. This is posting, I believe, on Saturday. It doesn't matter what year, just day apart. And I listened to these 10 records again. And you know something? I liked them as much today as I did last week. Having said this, is there a little bit of the placebo effect happening in the audiophile world over the last several years where there are a number of people that have to have this all analog uh, step process uh, for a record and they don't like when there's a digital step. And of course, uh, labels like Analog Productions Acoustic Sounds and Intervention and Impex and the Tone Poets with Blue Note and many others, including Mobile Fidelity, have led us to believe that their records are from all analog sources. Neil Young, as I posted in a video yesterday, has this actual badge that states if it's from an analog, uh, the analog chain or uh, digital was involved. Now, I personally don't care. I mean, look, Jesus Christ, look at this. <laughs> now, these aren't uh, records, obviously, but I have no problem with digital if it's mastered well and if it's done well. And obviously, uh, these Mobile Fidelity records are as good today as they were yesterday. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole uh, the political legality of all this, and it is a bit of a disingenuous thing because maybe it doesn't say specifically the analog chain on these, but we're led to believe that. But I'm going to show my top 10, not in any order. Now, there are a lot. In, in one case, I picked an artist, and I, I'm showing two records, but... I mean, his entire catalog from MoFi sound uh, amazing. I don't have them all. I have, uh, I think I have 65 Mobile Fidelity LPs uh, plus the Beetle Box. Now, let me say this. The Beetle Box back in the 1980s that Stan Ricker mastered, I think, is terrible. And that, we know, is all analog. So that's the irony here. Um, here's... I've sh I've talked about that box before. They had the covers of the tape boxes, and they proved it was tape. And there was a booklet with the um, album covers that came separate. I didn't like that style. Uh, this is one of my few single records. Now, this is the worst of the bunch, because when they did that, this is the one that went from a copy tape, the Capitol, I believe, copy tape, that doesn't have all the original uh, stereo versions of the songs on side B. So if you were wanting the best Magic Mystery Tour, you definitely have to go for the Horror Zoo, the German one, which captures that. And it's it's stunning. It's beautiful. I don't know if it's the original master. I, I, I assume it's a dub. And again, there's nothing wrong with having a dub of the master. And But just we just want to know. That's why in that video, I want the the Neil Young source badge put on every, which every label would accommodate. So let's talk about Mobile Fidelity here. I like these records, and again, I like them as much today as I did last week, but it does just go to show in the audiophile world that when pe someone is led to believe something is audiophile, do they just tell themselves it sounds better? But these do, and um, the mastering choices on these mo MoFi, I'm not going to argue. They're, they're really good. So here we go. My top 10, my favorite top 10 Mo Fidelity records. Kiko, Los Lobos, a favorite album of mine. I like the mastering choices here. Uh, I think of all these, this is the early one. This is uh, 2013 uh, pressing. So this, based on what we know, theoretically should be all analog. Does it matter? You decide. Uh, but this is a fantastic record. I think this is also a Mitchell Froome production. 
and uh, Krieg Wunderlich uh, was a mastering engineer who cut these records and cut most of the records in the last decade. And I think he really has improved on mobile fidelity, the sound of mobile fidelity. So whatever the source and whatever the steps, I credit him uh, to be an amazing mastering engineer. And I love this Los Lobos album. Another one, and this is interesting because this is a record that I didn't really love when I got it on CD. And it you know, it came out during the CD era. I thought it was lackluster and a little schmaltzy. I like Burt Baccarat, but this is Elvis Costello and Burt Baccarat. And I thought when I got this, this was a super vinyl edition that makes it even better, whatever the sources uh, are. And I fell in love with this album. It's beautiful. The songs meander in a in an intimate way. It's the um, crooner in a way of Elvis and the great songwriting and piano playing of Burt Baccarat. And it's, it's a fantastic record. It's not the angry young Elvis Costello as we know, but it's just, a, it's a wonderful record. And I just love the sound of this record. But musically, again, I've said it on my channel all the time, whether I do occasionally show audio file pressings or not, it's about the music. And if it sounds good to you, it doesn't matter um, the source at all. But this is a fantastic record, super vinyl. Next, I have about eight or nine Miles Davis, and the mobile fidelity Miles Davis sound great. Some are 45 RPM, some are 33. Uh, this is my favorite by far, uh, although they all sound really good. And this is, uh, in a silent way, the second great quintet. Just love the sound of this. Love the tightness of this. Love the addition of John McLaughlin, the fusion sound of that. Just intense guitar stuff, but it really has a soulful, funky jazz approach. And um, of course, with Tony Williams and Ron Carter and uh, Wayne Shorter, uh, just an amazing, uh, magnificent album and a great, uh, this is my favorite pressing of the album. Whatever that means today, it's still my favorite pressing of the album. Now, this was a surprise when this came out, was it last year? Um, year before 220 and this is double 45 and i like this record but i'd never heard this record sound anywhere near as good and that's double 45 of jeff beck truth rod stewart sings on a couple tracks this was one of the biggest improvements now i i will say in this top 10 a, a few of these are not audio file recordings but the mobile fidelity mastering and the cuts made these records sound so much better than the original sources. This is one for me. I never considered this a great sounding record. I have a, I think I have a 72 or 73 pressing on Epic Records, but this just blew me away. The drums, uh, the bass, it's a tight sounding record and it's a fantastic uh, recording. So again, digital step maybe for improvement? I don't know, but it, either way, it's fantastic. Ry Cooter, the, you know, they put out three Ry Cooter records around the same time. Boomer Story sounds great, especially uh, my one of my favorite cuts in that is the instrumental version of um, The Dark End of the Streets. And of course, Chicken Skin Music is wonderful, but this is my favorite, the Ry Cooter records, and it sounds so good. And, the, and the, just the piano uh, jazz playing of uh, Earl Father Hines with Ry Cooter on Diddy Wah Diddy, and then the Tattler, and just a really great sounding record. So really well uh, mastered. The cut on this is stunning, and it's a great record. Now, this has always been a favorite of mine, and I will say the original of this record, I have an original copy still, and it still sounds amazing. Does it sound better than this? Does this sound better? I don't know. This is double 45. It's a great recording to begin with, and it's, I think, a record that a lot of people have reevaluated or, or just read or discovered for the first time. And that is If I Can Only Remember My Name by um, David Crosby. All of the Crosby, Stills & Nash collective put out solo records around the same time. Steve Stills did his great first solo album with uh, Love the One You With and uh, Graham Nash did Songs for Beginners and all of them are great. This one has the beauty and the psychedelia, folky, uh, just magnificent of all the uh, recorded in San Francisco with all the San Francisco people from the dead and the Jefferson Airplane. 
with Neil Young, and it's really a good record. And this sounds great. This cut is really great. This is double 45. Again, mold fidelity. Now, there is a great Chris Bellman cut, I believe, that Rhino put out several years ago, which is amazing. This is a record that I discovered 20 years after the fact. For one, whatever reason, this record escaped me. It flew by me. But this beautiful record, which is so different than any other record Love ever put out, the great L.A. band, uh, you know, Alone Again or is worth the admission, just that opening track. And what a great sounding version this is in double 45. So, you know, last week I thought it was analog. This week it may not be. It's still as good as it was last week. Now this, to me, is one of the biggest improvements that I've ever heard in Mobile Fidelity. This is one of my all-time favorite records. It's one of the greatest albums uh, from the Summer of Love, the 1967 the Sound of San Francisco, and that's Surrealistic Pillow. The recording on this, remember, this is a time when the professional studios, the label studios, really didn't know how to record rock and roll really well. Early 1967, Jeff Sarampling go to LA and record this. They bring Jerry Garcia along as advisor, cultural attache to help them out. And there's reverb, it's drenched. And, you know, I love this record, the music. Again, it's about the music first. But this record, this double 45 record is the best sounding version I've ever heard of this music. And I wish it was a 45 version. I'm not always all in on the double 45s. I don't think that's a necessity. Yes, there is uh, sonic improvements and I understand the whole scientific dynamics and groove, uh, width, depth, all that kind of stuff, why? But this does sound amazing, starting out with She Has Funny Cars, and of course, Somebody to Love, Today, Beautiful Marty Ballon, Ballads, White Rabbit, Embryonic Journey, that great acoustic Yarmulke in song, amazing. And then there's Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan, I have a bunch of his uh, records on MoFi, but these two stand out. Double 45, a mono of Times Are a Changing, the acoustic, acoustic guitars, the minimalist recording style, fantastic record. And one that may surprise people. Now there is, you know, Desire, the Super Vinyl Desire sounds great, better than that record's ever sound, because that had a muddy record in the original version. So I almost threw Desire in, that Super Vinyl of Dylan, but I decided to put Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. The acoustic guitars on this are sublime. It's so wonderful based on this um, Sam Peckinpah film soundtrack. Love this record, and the, and this is a wonderful record. Now, having said that, the original Columbia pressing of this is a gorgeous record on its own. So do you need the MoFi? Probably not. Um, what's the improvement? It's the mastering engineer. It's the mastering engineer. Whatever the source is, it's the mastering engineer. Now, this is not an apologetic video to MoFi. Whatever they've done, possibly, in terms of their marketing and their you know, slippery slope of uh, digital, that's a whole other issue. I just want to say I like these records today, and just because I know they may not be what they were promoted, I don't like that. I think then that they shouldn't be charged the same way, but I still like the music and I like these pressings and the mastering choices. And lastly, of course, this wonderful record from the CD era. Um, I can't remember if this is a digital recording, but um, you know, that's a good question. I do not know the answer to that, but this is a wonderful sounding record. It soars, it's ethereal. It's one of the best breakup records of all time. So there we go, uh, 10 plus one, 11 mobile fidelity records. Interesting story, and then this story is gonna continue. So um, I think they are a great label, but um, you know, has there been some kind of things they held back, a little shady uh, in terms of their promotion of Source. I think it's time to put that little Neil Young Source badge on every single record from every single label. It'll probably never happen. But anyway, thanks for watching. These records are still good, whatever you think about Mobile Fidelity. And even those people, the digital people, are, are kind of, you know, riffing and, and, and joking and put, and talking about audio files that they got duped for all these years and they can't really hear the difference and all that uh, bullshit, which, I mean, there's something to be said about that. But, you know, if, if the music sounds good, no matter what the source, that's um, what we should concentrate on. Thanks for watching. Massey loves you. Wait.